in the next six days, I'll be crossing the Atlantic back and forth four times to Zurich, Switzerland. It's a pretty long time to be away from home, especially since this is Christmas Eve, but Zurich is just incredible. And I figured you might want to see a behind the scenes of how this trip comes together. So I'm two days out from working my next reserve period, kind of to expect what I'll be working. I can go to our crew app and scroll through the open trips and I can see that there's a Zurich six day available. And I'm also on for six days of duty on reserve. So it's pretty likely that I'll be working that trip, but to double check it, I can go to our reserves available and scroll all the way through the list and find my name. And I am number one in line for the six day bucket this time. We operate on a first in first out basis on reserve. So the other two pilots who are also on for six days have worked more recently than I have on call. So it's looking pretty likely that in two days from now, I will be going to Zurich. Let's take a look inside this trip. Starting on Christmas Eve, this six day Europe trip is fairly high time at 36 hours and 45 minutes of flight time and pay. I'll be away from home for a total of 119 hours and fly four Atlantic crossings back and forth to Zurich, Switzerland. This trip is timed really well with a 3.50 p.m. departure on day one and a 1 p.m. arrival time on the last day of the trip. The overnights are between 25 and 29 hours long with the shortest flight just under eight hours and the longest flight just over 10. Due to the high pay, good schedule, and desirable overnights in Zurich, this is usually a very senior trip in Chicago. If their seniority can hold it, line holders really only need to fly two of these during the entire month to meet minimum line value requirements. The only reason it's an open time for a reserve like me is because it starts on Christmas Eve. We call this a W pattern because there are two overnights in Zurich separated by a middle overnight away from our home base, this time in Newark. At over 16,700 miles, this is by far the longest trip I've flown to date. You can probably guess, but packing for six days is a challenge. I have a lot of reusable things like pullovers, and I have to have a second uniform as a backup. Definitely a challenge, but we can make it work. This is kind of an unusual trip for me because over the next six days, I'm working with a new crew every single leg for the four flights that I'm operating. That's 36 crew members between the two pilots and all the flight attendants that I'm working with on each trip. Now I'm the relief pilot for the entire time and at United our augmented flights are built with specific pairing IDs for the flying seat or for the relief pilot seat. And I'll make an entire video soon explaining exactly what it means to be an IRO and some of the pros and cons that come with the job. got up for my nap on day two, so I'm in Zurich on Christmas day. It's a beautiful day out there. Uh, normally Europe is very quiet on Christmas, so I'll probably have the whole town to myself and uh, go walk around to see what's open. Zurich is one of my favorite overnights in Europe. It's a super fast 15 minute ride to the hotel and we stay a five minute walk from the historic central part of town. Between the lake and the river, it's the perfect place to go swimming in the summer. And in the winter, day trips to the snowy Alps are pretty easy. And year round for chocolate lovers, well, I could go on and on. Needless to say, I try to leave plenty of extra room in my bag when I'm lucky enough to find myself in Switzerland. With four Atlantic crossings over six days, managing rest can definitely be a challenge. Everybody has their own strategy for it. Some people try to keep themselves on their home time zone. Some people follow a meal schedule similar to home and other people simply just rest when they're tired. Now for me, I'm in Chicago time, central time in the US. So the hardest part of the day in Zurich is going to be around 10 a.m. or 3 a.m. body clock time. That works out perfectly for our first flight because we'll be landing at 8 a.m or around 1 a.m. body clock time. So by the time we get to the hotel an hour later, that'll be the perfect time to take a two to three hour long nap. And nothing more than that, because I just wanna get a little bit of rest, enough to get through the rest of the day, but not too much so that I can fall asleep. 
Waking up from that nap is the hardest part of the trip because you're waking up with the least amount of sleep at the worst possible body clock time. But if you can get some coffee, go to the gym, do whatever it takes to get through and wake up, motivate yourself to go out for the rest of the day, I find that that works out really well so that I tire myself out by around 9 or 10 p.m. so that I can get a full night's sleep and be ready to fly back to the U.S. the next morning. It's 7.40 in the morning in Zurich and our van time is in about 15 minutes. So I normally use the last 10 to 15 minutes of the hotel stay to go ahead and get into the crew app to pull up the flight plan, certify myself fit for duty, um, and start looking at the route. One of the particular things that I have to deal with um, as the IRO coming out of Zurich is helping manage the uh, departure procedures. So we have a very complicated SID that has an immediate turn um, and coming back over the airport with an entirely separate engine out procedure due to the terrain and airspace around Zurich. And as the IRO, my job is to back up the flying pilots to make sure we're meeting all of the requirements of the SID and of the engine failure procedure uh, for the airport. With a full load of 167 passengers, we departed Zurich on time and had beautiful, clear skies to see the Alps in the morning. Our route took us a little farther north than usual over the southern tip of Greenland to avoid turbulence and headwinds in the North Atlantic. We still landed 35 minutes early in Newark and even with traffic made it into downtown Manhattan within an hour. But now it's time for some sleep before my next crossing back to Zurich tomorrow evening. Do you know what's just a little different than Zurich? Times Square in New York City. We stay just a few blocks off Times Square and it's kind of unreal, but I go back across the Atlantic in just a few hours for the third time in the past three days. All right, so Leo flies the 787 for one of the biggest airlines in Europe, and he also has one of the prettiest malls I have ever seen. What are we gonna do today? Today we're gonna fly to the southern part of Switzerland and do some formation flying with Swiss airplanes. I think it's gonna be pretty fun. It's gonna be a cool day. This is the PC7 made right here in Switzerland and uh, yeah, let's go for a spin. Not expect that at all. This is hands down the coolest overnight I've ever had. I don't think that I can ever top this. I should just call it quits now. I've flown over the Alps plenty of times from 30,000 feet, but seeing them up close like this was so impressive. Meeting new friends in Switzerland who love to fly as much as I do made this one of the best overnights of all time. Our aviation community is so small. No matter where in the world you find yourself, there's always going to be someone else who loves to fly. You just need to find them. But now it's time for some rest before my last flight back to the United States tomorrow. Getting good rest before a morning Europe departure time is really important because we're taking off at the worst possible body clock time, normally about 2 to 3 a.m. in our home time zone. Now for me as the IRO, that works out pretty well because on the first third of the flight, 
that's when I'm taking my rest break in the back, so it's pretty easy to fall asleep. Now the pilots flying usually have caffeine, some coffee before they fly to power through that time zone change. And for me, I avoid caffeine before the flight because I do need to rest during the first third. And then I'll get my coffee after the break when it's time for me to sit in the flying seat. Now for working over the holidays, I had a ton of fun on this trip, but I've got to tell you that working back and forth across the Atlantic over six days is exhausting. I'm so ready to get home because I'll need the rest. In two days from now, it looks like my next reserve assignment will have me going back across the Atlantic, this time to London.